You've overstepped your bounds. You stole what was mine. That wasn't some random score. Someone knew to hit that fan. That's what we call conjecture, Michael. I can work this one. when the bank called to tell me I didn't write all those checks. I'm on social security. Yes, ma'am. There's a fraud ring operating in this area. Oh. They must have taken my new checks out of my mailbox. Are you ready, Matt Joe? Yes, ma'am. Out of your mailbox you should get your checks sent to a p.o box or pick them up in person it isn't easy for me to get around officer i take the bus it's detective really you seem too young well i've aged some since this conversation look we've got your information here's my card don't hesitate to call if anything else comes up scout where are you going <laughs> I'm not at liberty to say. Surely you people know I can't make a comment on a goddamn investigation that's ongoing. Well, you want a soundbite? Sure. How about go fuck yourself? <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Okay. Next. Struggle. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Fucking press is having a field day with that one. These two stupid fucking coconuts, they go get themselves ripped off upstairs as breathing down my neck. I want on the case. It's handled, kid. Who? 
Steve Kitchen. Kitchen? Come on, Cap. That guy couldn't find a clue if you fed iced him one. He's got 15 years on you, Michael. Plus, he came up in the rotation. And correct me if I'm wrong. You're on a case? All right, paper pushing doesn't count. Look at that wasn't some random score. Someone knew to hit that fan. That's what we call conjecture, Michael. Yeah, well, let me on with Kitchen. I'll find out. Michael, you haven't exactly made what I would call a good case for team player around here. I can work this one. I'm not my dad. Don't dish your old man, son. Try living in a shadow. Michael. Look, I know you can do the job. I'm the one that put in for your promotion, but you are low man on the totem pole here. You will get your shot. No. No what? Uh, no, I do not want your assistance on this case. Oh, come on, Kitchen. I can check some leads for you, handle some legwork. I got this. I don't need a sous chef just because O'Brien handed you a toy detective badge to play with. Good. We all done here? What? I'm gonna go hit the head, bring it out. All right, let me know if you find it. Prick. You're late. I know coming it won't happen again. You uh, got something for me? I'm a little short this week, Carmen. David, that is two strikes in one day. Carmen, hit me up. Did you catch where we went down last night? Oh, don't make me guess. The police van hold up. What, you? Yeah. Well, I helped. <laughs> you didn't know you had it in you, kid? No. First, they gotta transact the stuff. But then I can catch up with you plus interest. Yeah, what's the stuff? The side and adjunct. What? I don't know. That's what it said on the side of the barrels. Spell it. Uh, P S E U. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's the shit they make mess with. <laughs> you could steal it. You just can't pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Ray is looking for a buyer. Ray. Uh, yeah, Blaine. Ray Blaine. Works for Colin. What's it work? Ray didn't say. I just know what it makes, so I figured it's gotta be worth a lot. Blaine's too small time to move that much product on his own. It's Colin's show. He had Ray put together the team, and we just get it cut. Did he? Tell you what. We'll buy it from you. Deal us in. Look at your debt for giving us a finance fee. I don't know, Carmen. It's not my call. Mm. I'll tell you what. Here's your options. You and Blaine, you bring me the goods. I help you cut 20%. You get your loan forgiven. Win, win. You don't, well, what would I insist in some protocol? could prove injurious to our friendship. My shop tonight, 10 o'clock. Oh, with David. Don't be fucking late. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Brant, DNA results back from the lab? Uh, the DNA on the vault doesn't match that on the broken door glass. Get your fucking feet off my desk. Shit. Asshole. Uh, you know, Conley, you need to stick with that little bad check case. Maybe when you're out of diapers, you can tag along. Kind of hypocritical when you're wearing the pants. Fuck you. Only well, if you're on the bottom, you fat fuck. You know, losing that mouth may actually help you make some friends around here. You know what? I'm good. Fine, so. Uh... Yeah, how's that working out? Riding tree, riding apple.
fucking god. Well, what you think, Kitchen? He bit. His shaft ten tonight. Good. Now get the fuck out of here. Go on, get the fuck out of here. Come on, we're good. Come on, get in. You must be Ray. Pierce says there is your body. Follow me. Sorry, man, come on. Curry, let me ask you a question. You mind telling me what you're doing, stealing another man's property? We're not stealing it from corn. We're selling it for him. Wasn't talking about corn. Took it from the cops, man. What are you talking about? What's corn one for? Half a meal a barrel. Two mil all in. Things will kill you. <laughs> you gotta die of something. Nice night. Yeah, a lot of stars. You see up there? That's the hunter, Orion. And those three bright stars in perfect alignment. That's his belt. To the left, you have Connors Major, 
and Paris Minor. So you see, even up in Cosmos, the hunter has his faithful dogs. So that's the hunter, and those are his dogs? Yeah. here, Detective Kitchen. Call off your fucking dog and I'll tell you why I'm here. I know why you're here. You pissed off the wrong guy. <laughs> For crying out loud, Schlichter, how many corpses are you going to make tonight? Is it weighing on your conscience? No. It's weighing on my back. I gotta haul this stiff back to the lake. Stay late again? It was either this or right, I will not tap my foot to the music on the blackboard a hundred times. Did you catch all the bad guys? Not all of them. Oh, God. And they need to keep you on the payroll. Aren't the Hall's new acoustics amazing? Yeah, tell me in the car, I'm hungry. All right, well. How was it today? Oh, you know, same shit, different day. Well, Connolly, from where I stand, in your line of work, boredom is a good thing. Well, it's a boredom I can handle. What, are we not playing well with others? Oh, me? Yeah. Jesus, come on, let's go feed you. Any idea where we packed our wedding photos? Uh, I was on remote duty. So. Hey, look. Mm. Where should we put it? It's a uh, moth balls. Make yourself useful. Closet shelf or storage. Come on. Come on, let's go. I mean. You should put that one out. like him there. Yeah, Bob call him a kid of black. Don't say that. You're not like him and you need to find a way to forgive him. Gia, can I just please watch some TV? Can you stop trying to fix it? Fine. Yeah. Uh, just maybe one day you could uh, 
try to let it go. You know, for me, it'd be nice to live with just one Connolly man. The dead one sucks up a lot of oxygen around here. Storage. Our patron donor behind this landmark concert hall renovation is a third generation Clevelander and a self-made shipping magnet who has made his family's name synonymous with community service. His generous donations over the years has enabled the Philharmonic not only to survive, but to flourish. On behalf of the Philharmonic Board, I ask you to join me in welcoming three-time Cleveland Chamber of Commerce Businessman of the Year, Angelo Leonetti. Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> Well, it seems that our fair city is headed on a, uh, an exciting road to a bright future and uh, this magnificently renovated concert hall is for all of us, generations to come. Frankly, I can't wait to hear these talented musicians perform in it. I am grateful to have been able to contribute. Thank you very much. Enjoy the festivities. Refreshments are in the lounge. come to us with the plates pulled. We were about to mash it when we saw it still had one. I contacted the DMV. They said the plates were state issued, so I called you guys. Did you check the truck first? Yeah, empty. Forensics is on the way. What the fuck are you doing here, Conley? Relax, Brent. I called him. Brought some coffees. You were my feelings. Asshole can't even show up on time. Would you two shut up? When was Kitchen last seen? Don't know. Day before yesterday? Yeah, he won't return my calls. So it looks like he got a missing drug case and no detective. Jesus, I can't believe this guy. He's right, though. I'm swamped and nobody else is free. Come here, Mike. Look, until we know where Kitchen is, I want you to loop me in. Do you understand me? I don't want you disappearing like Kitchen. You got it, Cap. I'm on it. Michael, Michael, Michael. Please don't make me regret this decision. No, I got this, Cap. Oh, God. The question is on the night. The question just the next day. Detective Kitchen did a third pass. Why are we at this again? Because I need to hear it. So you cut down a back alley. It's a detour. Road work. There was a guy filling potholes. So one guy, a detour sign, late at night, down a back alley. You didn't find it suspicious? You're saying we didn't do our job, detective? I'm saying answer the fucking question. All right, uh, after the fact, yeah, maybe. In the moment, I saw a detour, and I detoured. You get a good look at him? He had a respirator over his mouth. I did see a guy had a tattoo on his neck. Black, jaggy, punk-ass, tribal-looking thing. So why were they even moving the suit of Fedman, anyway? Taking it to a more secure locker downtown. But the merch was from up us two months ago. I mean, why move it out? Well, don't ask us. We're just the messengers. 
Did you mention the transfer to anyone beforehand? No, sir. Is there anything else, sir? That'll be all. So, Miss Consolo, where does your case stand now? Well, with my evidence snatched, it gets buried in the Indiana Jones warehouse. You know, every time I think I've got a lead, it disappears. My witnesses, my only evidence, poof, gone. All I'm left with are hunches and theories. Like what? Okay. There's too many disappearances and witnesses recanting and suspects moving away through too many separate cases. I believe there's an organized crime network behind this drug bust and half the unsolved crimes in this town. I'm by that. Who's behind it? Either off the grid or high profile and hiding in plain sight. A name? Someone like Angelo Leonetti. Leonetti, shipping Leonetti, who donates to every Cleveland Civic, anything, including the police fund. Bingo. Hey, nobody goes after the goose laying the golden eggs, right? Why doesn't that feel as strange as it sounds? My wife would kill me going after the guy that rebuilt the concert hall. She's a cellist from the Philharmonic. Mm. Give me a break, huh? Back your way down the food chain. If he's got a business run, so do his associates. Such as? Check out Cohen Construction. Thanks. Welcome. Mr. Cohen, can I get you anything? No. Here. Mr. Leonetti, how was the ceremony? Very nice, very nice. They had cake. Angelo? How you doing, Kenny? Uh, Loretta, hold my calls, would you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Albert, give us a minute, would you? Thanks. So. Uh, thanks for coming, Kenny. Uh, sure, sure. So what can I do for you, Angelo? Well, look, uh... I understand that you're conducting business outside of channels. And, uh, wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. Not sure what you're talking about. Yes, you are. You've overstepped your bounds. The suit of Fedrin. Look, I was going to bring it around to you. But you didn't. Have a fig. Yeah? No. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Have a fake, Teddy. Come on. I don't want a fake. Come on, grow myself. Come on, have a fake. I'm good for you. <laughs> Look, we have this gentleman's agreement as to hierarchy. We have not honored that protocol. I apologize, Angela. You know, I would never do anything to hurt our relationship. I appreciate the situation not repeating itself. No, no, it won't. I promise you, it won't. And we're good. We're good? Yeah. We're good. That's it, we're good. that nah looks like a geriatric bruce lee movie in slow motion you should try why ruin this body with muscles like lethal force slow down into meditative pace perfect control We gotta clean things up before questions start getting asked. So when? Sooner the better. 
It works like most nights. Okay. Mr. Cohen, Mike O'Connell, Cleveland PD. I was wondering if I could have a moment of your time. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Come on, yeah. have a seat. I'm looking into last week's police van. Hold up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about that on the news. <laughs> What's that got to do with me? Oh, we're checking out businesses, employee ex cons. You got a program, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'd give them a second chance, give something back. And the tax incentives don't hurt. <laughs> I'm a pragmatist, you know? Right. Two birds with one stone, right? Do you have any idea of anyone that might have been involved? <laughs> what can I say? They're all ex cons. I'm going to have to ask to look at your employee records, just see who's working for you. You are, huh? The department would appreciate your cooperation. I bet it would. his name. None of your business what his name. Connolly. Michael Connolly. Thank you. He had a folder with him. What was in that folder? He asked me for some employee records. It looks better if I cooperate. Okay? You know, I value integrity. Something you seem to be lacking. Hey, you want to tell your poodle to stop scratching up my car, you fucking crowd? Do you know who I work with, huh? If you touch me, he'll have your head. Who do you think sent me? <laughs> When did you leave him? Oh, about 7.30. I must have been the last person to see him alive. Well, next to last, anyway. Yeah. Wasn't a robbery. Somebody didn't like me talking to him. So far, no prints, Captain, but we're still checking. Wait. I got some. We got blood and broken glass. Type this against the victim, run it through the database, and make sure I see the report. 
Right away, sir. Well, Conley, you needed a lead. Looks like you got your one. Yeah. Okay, so what are we looking at? Cohen used the United's company here, here, and here. Yep. For shipping. It's all legit. Michael, we got nothing with any teeth in. Cohen's murder's got enough teeth to question him. Neutral stuff. Did he have any enemies? We need hard evidence. Look, you can't go in at that level. You'd just be poking the bear. Copy that. No bear fucking. I'm serious, no. Michael. Look, the bee stings the bear. Guess who wins? Back your way down the food chain. No. Nope. No. None of them. Yeah. That's the little fucker. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Something to party on? Oh, yes, you got time there, huh? Oh, yeah, it's funny. Come on. We're gonna have a good time, right? Freeze, Carl! Ah, Robert, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You already got that memorized, don't you? Keller Abrams. Let's skip right to the part of who was on the whole team. What hold up? Points for trying. You were ID'd at the scene of the crime. In your line of work, you should learn how to blend in more. Look, it's late and I want to get home for dinner, so as an unarmed accessory, I can reduce your sentence by you cooperating with me. And if I don't? Then I've got you selling illegal narcotics to my undercover cop. It's win-win for me. So what's in it for me? Well... That says you've got two priors, so sentencing-wise, this wouldn't work out too well for you. Let's just say I'll keep you out of Three Strikes City. Guy I work with brought me in. Ray Blaine. Does he work for Cohen Construction, too? Yeah. He's not showing up all week. Tell me about it. What do you want to know? Is he Pisces? Does he have brown hair? Take a fucking guess. Okay, Ray and me met up before with one of the gunmen. Guy bragged about having a line in with a big wig. Can you put me in touch with him? First time. bother with this dump. Mm. And we're gonna get a place of our own, aren't we? Yeah, baby. Yeah, once this money comes in, we'll get a great place. Maybe a new town. He's gonna find the buyer for the Fedrin first. Did that last bit of info help? Yep. Now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, earned me a leg up with the big man. Gonna pay off big time. Okay. Yeah. It's 
Speaking of, have you uh, heard anything else? First things first. What? Catch your breath yet? Oh. My turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Keller has got to get Jimmy Marga to say he was there. And who else was a part of it? And that Cohen hired them. Laura, breathe. I got it. Hmm. When's he meeting him? Ten o'clock. Okay. Well, let me know what Marco says. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, I told you you didn't have to stay. Go get some lunch, honey. I will. Thanks. Okay. So what's so important that we gotta meet? Wondering what we're doing. I haven't heard from Ray, have you? No. Who do you sell the stuff to? I don't know. Are you okay? You seem a little off. I'm fine. What about that big wig you had a, a, a line in with? What would you say his name was? Why are you asking so many questions? I need to get paid. I did a job. I want to get paid. I've got bills. I didn't say his name. Do me a favor. Why don't you uh, lift your shirt? What the fuck? Fucking Louie. Hey, Jimmy, please. Yes. Jimmy, everybody relax. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Relax, relax, relax. God, he's got a gun. God. You're quiet tonight. Yeah, it's got a lot on my mind. Will it work? Oh, I got that big hold-up case. Michael, why didn't you say so? I mean, I thought they gave it to somebody else. What happened? Oh. Cap asked if I wanted a case. I said, yeah. Well, aren't you excited? No, oh, it's, it's just a lot of work. Um, he teamed you up with the other guy? Kitchen? Yeah, I'm on the same case. What time are you going in tomorrow? Eight o'clock, organizing task force. Mm -hmm. Hey, your phone's in here. You just got a text. What does it say? Internal affairs meeting in AM about involvement in tonight's I... shooting. You were in a shooting? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you to worry. No. You didn't want me to know. I'm your partner, Michael. Not your backdrop. There are two of us here. You married a cop. Right. I knew what I was signing up for. I knew the dangers. I just thought that we were a team, you know? That you wouldn't hide things from me. It's my job. 
This is our life. It affects me too. So the perp pulls a piece just like this on your dad, point blank, twitchy as shit. Your dad was as cool as a Buddha. Do you know what he did? Mm. He asks the perp, had he ever killed a guy? The perp says no. And your dad said, it changes you, man. Like, I take a bullet, I'm, I'm done in a second. My face will haunt you in your nightmares. Trust me. You don't want it. Do you know what happened? The perp freezes. Your dad whip grabs the pistol, kung fu's into the ground, cuffs him while I'm pissing my pants. <laughs> your dad was one stone cold cop. Yeah, he's one stone cold father too. Oh, Mikey. He did the best he could. Whatever happened that night, he... You read the report. That was paper. I want to hear you tell it. You were there. Drugs went missing from evidence. I got word that Stevie was setting up a deal with the Italians. So I go down there, maybe talk some sense into your dad. The WAP pulls a piece. Everything went to shit. He shot him before I could take him out. It was over in a second. I like to feel that maybe your dad was setting him up somehow. Yeah, well, that's not how Eternal Affairs saw it. I fought him to pay out his benefits, but your mom didn't deserve to lose him. I have always felt responsible. No, don't. He did it to himself. Mikey, your dad was a good man. Not a perfect one. Anybody could have been tempted. Anybody. I mean, he had a wife and a kid to take care of on a cop's salary. He always had this wall of approval that I can never quite climb my ass over. So I used to hate dinner because he'd grill me. Was that up to code, Mikey? I spent my entire childhood trying to get my ass up to code. I was like running through the desert, chasing up. What are those things called? Mirage. Mirage. Yeah. It turns out it was all a bunch of bullshit. Mikey, I can say this because I knew your dad. Your father had a vision. The man that he wanted you to be, and that wasn't a lie. Jimmy, have a seat. How'd you sleep? Uh, fuck you. Well, let's see how our date goes first. How'd you get involved in the police hold on? Uh, I wasn't. Well, Keller Abrams said otherwise. Keller Abrams is dead. Well, you say that like that's all I got on you, but your parking lot adventure the other night is enough to cost you 10 years. Listen, your only bargaining chip is to tell me about the hold up. This guy that brought you in, Ray Blaine. Yeah. What's his plan? Where is he now? 
Haven't seen him in a few days. So either he took off with your cut or something happened to him. I mean, either way. He said he got a better offer on the stuff. Paris had hooked him up. Paris. David Paris. Who's your bar? He didn't say. He just said he was going down to a fish store. Dinner fish or hobby fish. You got me. All I heard was fish. Hmm. Well, I mean, it sounds like an awfully big score for little Ray to mastermind. <laughs> well, he didn't. He put together the crew. His boss was behind it. Kenny Cohen, how'd you know him? I don't really know him. Keller said you were bragging about having some in with some big wig. Now listen, Jimmy, I can make this whole thing dependent on you telling me what you're not telling me. Bullshit. If you're withholding information that can tie together my case, you bet your ass I can! Sometimes I pass info on to this guy, he pays me, what he does with it is none of my business, but sometimes... Sometimes after somebody... It's tied to it. Look, any blueback lands on me, it's over, you know. No, I don't. It's like a rumor around town. You mess up, you disappear. Jimmy, you're in police custody. We can protect you. No, you can't. All right. You know what, the only other option is to put out the word you spilled the beans and we release you onto the street. And then we see if your big wig and his boogie man decide that you messed up. I got him. Him who? Leonetti. Angelo Leonetti? Wait, is this based on the testimony of that kid? Leonetti pays him for information. People go missing. How do we play this? <laughs> Wait, Michael. There's no play this. You're talking about one of our city's patrons. Marco's testimony is enough to launch an investigation. You're aware that you're talking about the guy who bankrolls the police fund every year. He plays poker with the mayor, Michael. So I can't request a There are people that you go after on the word of some scumbag punk, and there's, Michael, listen to me, there's ones that you don't. Cap, we I can't let this guy walk if he's responsible for half the crimes Michael, in the city just because of all the commas Michael, and zeros he has in his tax return. Michael, you need to find something to back up the kid's testimony. Otherwise, it's mitts off. Here you go, Missy. Don't forget to water them. <laughs> Have a nice day. Everybody goes for the lionfish. You gotta watch those fin rays, though. They're poisonous. Personally, I like this little guy over here. Come check this out. Stonefish. Nobody ever sees him coming. You looking for anything in particular today? No, wife wanted a baby. I said, let's start with the fish. <laughs> well, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. I just love these little shops. The Mott Paws. Been here long? 25 years? You haven't been bought out by the uh, box stores, Fishes of Us? Not yet. It's tough to stay afloat, though. Take a whole lot of guppies. Mind if I grab one of these? 
No, Fucinotti. Is that Italian? Born and raised in Little Italy. Oh, old school. Yeah, my dad too. Oh, yeah? What did he do? A fisherman, actually. You know, I think we need to set you up with a starter fish. We had an arrangement, Angela. I pocket the Fedron, your case gets buried. But then you got greedy. You took it back. And that upset the balance. This wasn't my hand, Jack. You stole what was mine. I don't give a fuck which minion did it. That problem has been eliminated. And it's your fucking job to cold case it. Your sloppy elimination job is the problem, Angelo. You left a fucking body in a parking lot. Tell me, how do I sweep that under the rug? There's just so many holes in the boat I can plug up. Why don't you just pull off your bloodhound puppy? Huh? Because he's nipping at heels. It's a little late for that, Angelo. Your jailbird? He's flapping his jaw. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. That's hearsay from a goddamn lowlife. It's enough to kickstart the kid's case. And I've tugged his collar all I can without raising eyebrows. Take him off the case, Jack. It's in your best interest. That sounds a lot like a threat to me. Yeah, that's just a little friendly advice. A threat would be more like making your extracurricular entrepreneurships public. That goes both ways, old friend. No honor among thieves, huh? Killing you? It just might be worth it. You know what we got in common? We got enough common sense to curb our baser instincts for the benefit of mutual gain. And we can hate each other as much as we want. But we need each other. Right the ship, Jack.
blasphemy, B and E, petty theft, truancy. I mean, he was a real little Al Capone. From the last one, May 77, he did a year in juvie. So what, after that, he just went straight? Well, he got smart. Check out the police report. Look who was listed at the last B and E and walked away while Carmen did a year in juvie. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was us once. The hood didn't have nice parks. We were knocking over liquor stores. <laughs> Could have been different. Yeah. It's in the blood. Yeah. I gotta tell you something, Carmen. I'm sick of all this drug shit. I wanna be done with it. it says now I wanna be remembered. Kidding me? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be remembered as a painter and saint. Ah, oh, bullshit. It's all built on a house of cards. I guess they opened up a can of arms, bringing your fedrin back from Colin. I should have asked you first. I'm sorry, Ange. You didn't know. Come on. Yeah? Not the suit of fedrin. You should handle it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, no, all right. Uh, take it. Just move the stuff. Serious? Yeah, yeah. You know my contacts. Just move the stuff. You can have my cut. Huh? Hey, Ange. Huh. You got a brain tumor or something? I, I don't have a fucking brain tumor. <laughs> I don't trust anybody but you. Capisce? Thank you. Detective Connolly, I have the DNA results from the blood on that glass shard of Cohen's car. Canis lupus femoris. What is that? Donkey. Doberman. Thank you. office. Jesus, you okay? Wait, what kind of dog? A uh, big scary shit kind with teeth. Where is it now? I, I, I don't know. Okay, listen, the blood match on Cohen's car was a Doberman. Yeah, yeah, that was a Doberman. I mean, well, you gotta be getting closer. They're trying to scare you. Wait, who else knows about this case?
Evening, Sarah. How are you? I'm a friend of Jimmy's. You know Jimmy? Yeah. I'm really sorry what happened to him. You know, Jimmy used to provide us with the information that you got from that female attorney you're working with. What did she and this young detective talk about this morning? They talked about getting a search warrant for Carmen Puccinaldi. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I can get a lot of information for you. I can do whatever you want. I have connections in the district attorney's office. I, yeah. I'm really good at this. I've been doing yeah. it for a while. I... That's very good. I like that idea. May I have a glass of water? Okay. Yeah, sure. You kind of want another one? Yeah, babe, hit me again. You got it. Carmen. Hey, man. Can I get you something? No, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> hey, listen. The cops are obtaining uh, a search warrant down here. It's no problem. Angel will get me out of there. One phone call to the mayor. It's past that point. So this will... He wants me to take the fall again. Fucking Angela. He's not untouchable, you know. This is a warning. No, my friend. It's a head start. Okay. Take it easy. Damn it, I knew it, fucking cop. Hey, what's up? Open the door, you little ravioli. We open in 20. Open the door. What happened? Your goldfish died? Yeah, I got the key in the back. I just got to... All right, boys, now back alley. Door right now. Get him. Move, move, move. Seriously? Four against one, you think you're gonna get very far? All right, fuck it. I'll tell you everything you want to know about Angelo Leonetti. Okay. I'm not letting that motherfucker throw me under the bus again. You cut me a deal, I'll tell you who the real is. Who shot? Yeah, 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 yeah. Check the room! Man, yeah, we got a man down! So we're checking the room!
You need to find something to back up the kid's testimony. Otherwise, it splits up. It's okay. Um, embarrassed is more like it. No, on the contrary. Johann Sebastian Bach's courant requires great discipline. Tempo giusto. Bravo. Impressive. Your name that tune is impressive. Are you a musician? Me? Musician? <laughs> no. But my grandfather was. Unfortunately, it didn't trickle down to me. <laughs> May I? Sure. Please. Thank you. Wow. Uh, what did your grandfather play? My grand... Oh! violin with the Berlin Philharmonics. But unfortunately, the Nazis came to power. He was drafted. You know, my grandfather he used to tell me stories from the war. Horrific things, really. But he always told me, I'm telling you this so that you one day can tell your children. And they, in their turn, can tell theirs. And hopefully this horrible thing will never happen again. Grandfather said, I wish they had sent me to the front to die. Now instead he was sent to a concentration camp. And he served in a unit where they separated children from their parents. Healthy children to the workstations and other children. And one day, the officers found out that my grandfather was a great violinist, and they ordered him to put together some entertainment for the officers when they had a party. Entertainment performed by the Jewish prisoners. Then there was this Christmas celebration. There was a young girl. 12, 13 years old, with the voice of an angel, according to my grandfather. And she sang for the officers. And one officer stood up and said, no more of this Jewish shit. I want to hear a German Christmas song. I want to hear Silent Night. She didn't know Silent Night, the Jewish girl. The officer went up to her and slapped her and said, you better sing Silent Night. 
Officer went up to my grandfather and said, you take this piece of shit outside and kill her. Imagine that little girl performing for those killers. The fear when she didn't know the song. The terror when she thought she was about to be shot. My grandfather took the little girl outside as ordered, but he couldn't kill her. Instead, he found a way out from the camp, and he told her, run, never look back. Well, my grandfather survived the war, but he never touched his violin ever again. Would you mind playing the Quran for me? Wait, I don't even know your name. It's perfect that way, isn't it? Mr. Leonetti, Detective Michael Connolly, Cleveland PD. I just wonder if I could ask you a few questions. This could be done another time. You always attend the funerals of people who are dying your watch, Detective Connolly? I'm sorry for your loss, Mr. Leonetti. It's just that Mr. Puccinaldi's last words were of you. He said he wasn't willing to die to protect you. Do you have any idea what he might have meant? All right, that's enough. Leave Mr. Leonetti alone. Puccinaldi was a childhood friend, and I am truly devastated over his tragic death. As well as the revelation that apparently he hadn't put the habits of his juvenile delinquent past behind him. But if you're on a wild goose chase to somehow link his criminal activities to me, there'll be consequences. Tell you, Captain. 
What consequences am I telling him, sir? Let's go. I need an ID on 8900 Chester Road. Stand by. Present residence, 1 Angelo J. Leonetti. Ah, uh, copy. Oh, Scotch Nate. Jack did his own wet work. <laughs> Fucking mech. So, I didn't know you served two masters, Schlichter. Well, I could have had it to both of you. It's not much surprises me, but this this explains a little bit. Like Cohen's body being left for the cops to find. Is not the sole issue here. No integrity? 
you. <laughs> okay. Carmen. Yeah, yeah. Crossed my mind that that might rattle your code. He was a likable little fucker, wasn't he? Huh? <laughs> I loved him, though. I did. I loved him. You don't mind if I smoke, do you? Decisions affect more than just you. You see, I have another assignment for tonight. Flowers, you traitor. <laughs> Come on, let's go. It's a beautiful night. Attend the funerals of people who die in your watch. Like... Who do you think has to bury you? <sighs> and that wasn't a lie. Take a nap. Easy now, cowboy. You had a 911. Shots fired. Was some of them yours? Uh, I saw the shooter. Yeah, I know. We're on it. He may still be in the area. No, he's not. Kid! Where the fuck you going? Shot in his house, I got there right after and went after the perp and he got away. 
Okay. Where are you? Uh, I'm heading back to the station to get an APB on the shooter. All right, I can call that in from here. Come on over. Okay, we got a white male, 50s, black Jaguar, Ohio Plates, PKY72K. I'm five away. See the other guy, right? Yeah, well, I did see the other guy. Can I see this guy? By the way, I owe you an apology on Leonetti. He was in this after all. You like this black, right? Yeah, yeah. Listen, this guy's tying up loose ends. He's going to leave town. He knows what I look like. Michael, I I know, know. I know. They filled me in when I called in the APB on Schlichter. Mikey, do you remember when your dad and I took you to Municipal Stadium to see the Indians play on your seventh birthday? It was cloudy out. And you were concerned that it was going to get rained out. Do you remember what your dad said to you? He said, no way. Am I going to let it rain on my son's birthday? And sure enough, I'll be damned if the sun didn't come out. She lived there. I never said his name. I know. Guess Kitchen figured it out too, huh? No. Kitchen wanted a bigger cut to keep from snitching to Leonetti that I had had him tip off Cohen to the drug transfer to begin with. So Cohen took the bait, stole your drugs, giving you an excuse to take Leonetti down. And I'm the dumb rookie cop you threw on the case. You're not as dumb as I thought you were. However, you did walk in here without your gun, Michael. I'll give you Kitchen's 20%. We take over Leonetti's territory, we make a killing. I'm sorry, Cap. 30 cops, not my five year plan. Schlichter said he had one more assignment. What was it, Cap? You. Sorry, 
I shot. He was planning to kill me after I kill you. You could have taken me out. Twice. Oh, more than that. Why didn't you? Because we both descend from misjudged men. And you're an honorable one. Oh, and Klaus likes you. I'll give you 10 minutes before I call it in. It's not a warning. It's a head start. Sunday morning omelets. A lot, I can't stand them. <laughs> All right, it's your turn. I like fortune cookies that actually give you a fortune. Like, tell me I'm going on a trip or yeah. like I'm going to win the lottery or something. Yeah. Yeah. Start the dock and sweep your way out. Copy that. Hey guys, so listen. So you heard? This is the third guy. FBI, Interpol. There's no record of him. Ten to one, they never find him. Yeah, it's a pretty good bet. Internal Affairs had a field day with that thumb drive, though. It's got Jack on the phone ordering executions. Leonetti all the way down. You were the last of them. But you know, Jack would have been thinking, he would have called me. I'd have killed you for free. Well, with your aim, I think I'd be safe. Yeah. I'm interviewing the witness later today. Okay. Did 
Did you know him? No, oh, he's my father. Sorry for your loss. You must be proud of him. Yeah.
these two stupid fucking coconuts. They go get themselves ripped off. Upstairs is breathing down my neck. I'm not on the case. It's handled. Oh, Steve Kitchen. Kitchen, come on, cat. That guy couldn't find a clue if you fed ice to one. You got 15 years on you, Michael. Plus, you came up in the rotation. And correct me if I'm wrong. You want a case? I had people pushing as a cat looking. That wasn't so random score. Someone nearly hit that fan. That's what we call conjecture, Michael. Well, let me on with Kitchen. I'll find out. Michael, you haven't exactly made what I would call a good case for team player around here. I can walk this one. Okay. So, raise like a full body. 
on the blackboard a hundred times. Did you catch all the bad guys? Not all. Oh god. Can they need to 
keep you on the payroll. And the hall's new acoustics are amazing. Tell me in the car, hungry. Alright, well. How was it today? Oh, you know, same shit, different day. Well. Kind of away from where I stand. And your line of work boarding is a big thing. Looks like him now. I'll call the camera. Don't say that. You're not like him and you need to find a way to forgive him. Yeah, can I just please watch some TV? Can you stop trying to fix it? Just one Connolly man. I did want sex up like our oxygen around him. Patron donor 
behind this landmark concert hall renovation is a third generation Clevelander and a self-made shipping magnet who has made his family's name synonymous with community service. His generous donations over the years has enabled the Philharmonic not only to survive, but to flourish. On behalf of the Philharmonic Board, I ask you to join me in welcoming three-time Cleveland Chamber of Commerce Businessman of the Year, Angelo Leonetti. Seems that our fair city is headed on a, uh, an exciting road to a bright future, and uh, this magnificently renovated concert hall is for all of us, generations to come. Frankly, I can't wait to hear these talented musicians perform in it. I am grateful to have been able to contribute. Thank you very much. Enjoy the festival. Refreshments in the lounge. Thank mm-hmm. you. 